joining us. We're still on our journey talking about God's purpose. And this week we're talking about being shaped for God's purpose. And what does it mean when I say being shaped or molded uh, to do something? Uh, We can take Play-Doh or clay and build something great, but in order for it to get to where we want it to be, in order for it to do right, in order for it to be able to, to be shaped into something, we have to work with it. We have to soften it up. And the same thing goes for people. In the Bible, God compares us to clay in the book of Jeremiah because just like clay, we need uh, to be molded and shaped and worked on. Uh, The way we are now, it, it needs work. We're not in a good state to do things for God's purpose and to do things for God's glory. We do bad things, we say bad things, and we need help. Uh, That's just the truth. We need help. We are by no means perfect, but God helps us along the way by molding us and shaping us like he like a potter would do clay. So let's look at what Jeremiah has to say about this. Jeremiah is a book in the Bible. Um, It's an Old Testament book. And the prophet Jeremiah is the writer of this book. Uh, Jeremiah, he's known as the weeping prophet because Uh, He felt bad for his people. He felt bad for God's people. He felt bad for his nation. Things had gotten so out of control with those people. Uh, God's people, they were doing so many bad things. And of course, when we do things wrong and do things bad, God requires punishment uh, for us. And so Jeremiah felt bad because God was going to punish his people for the bad things that they had done. And so God is talking to Jeremiah And he sends him to the potter's house and he uses this illustration. He uses this metaphor of a potter working with clay. As a prophet, Jeremiah was to tell God's message to God's people. And so God used that illustration of the potter and the clay to help Jeremiah tell the message to the people. So let's look at Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah 18, Jeremiah goes to the pottery shop. The Lord told me, go to the pottery shop, and when you get there, I will tell you what to say to the people. I went there and saw the potter making clay pots on his pottery wheel. And whenever the clay would not take the shape he wanted, he would change his mind and form it into some other shape. Then the Lord told me to say, people of Israel, I, the Lord, have power over you just as a potter has power over clay. That's a tough illustration in these verses. When the people messed up, God started over. Let's do a quick game of Pictionary. I'm going to test out my drawing skills. Luckily, when we draw or make something out of clay, uh, we can start all over. Uh, We can erase it. Um, God does that a little different with us, but we're going to play Pictionary, and then we're going to get back into what this means for us. All right, so we're going to do a game where I draw something, you try to guess it. And the good thing is that when we draw, if we mess up, we have the ability to erase it so that we can get it just right. And that's the whole point of that scripture. God is going to get us just right. So that may mean some extra lines or erasing. But when it's all said and done, we know that we're going to be exactly what God wants us to be when we submit to him and do what he tells us to. All right. So first thing I'm going to draw, let's see if you can guess it. It's pretty easy I think (laughs) supposed to be a house (laughs) did you guys get house all right so next thing I'm going to draw let's see if you can guess it this is gonna be a hard one Uh, oh gosh that's horrible it's hard when you draw on your phone (laughs) um let's see can you guess what that is? That's a bad picture. So if you didn't get ice cream, I don't blame you. All right. Let's see if we can guess this one. Could make it easy, but I'm going to be hard on myself. Or better yet, <laughs> there's the easy version. What is that? If you got cross, you did good. My drawing is not that great. So, all right. Let's see this round. Oh gosh, I did that one horrible. <laughs> did you get money if you did you did good it's not easy drawing on your little phone uh let's try another one here maybe i should just go slow 
that looks pretty easy did you get tree if you did tree you did good and see you can erase to make it perfect i'm gonna use that i'm gonna use the eraser when i mess up and see see how we can get it just right All right, did you get pizza? If you got pizza, you did good. And so the power of just being able to correct and fix something. And that's what God's going to do. He's going to shape us to um, fit us so that we can be according, so that we can be what he desires us to be and fit for his purposes. That may require some more lines, uh, may require taking away some things, but God's going to get us right. And this is what God did with the nation of Israel a very, very long time ago. Uh, they messed up. They had gotten so far from God. They turned away from God. They were doing all these bad things. And so God, you know, led them into punishment. They had to be punished for all their wrong actions. Today, uh, God still punish us, punishes us as well. It may look a little bit different. Uh, let's say you uh, disobey your mom or disobey one of your parents. You know, you're going to get in trouble uh, punishment is good for us. It may not seem good, but it helps us to do better. It helps us to do right. It helps us not to make that mistake again. So God used punishment back then to punish his people. Today, we are still punished by God. We're punished uh, by our, our parents, those in charge of us. Punishment happens when we do something wrong, but there's something else that can happen when we do something wrong. We can seek forgiveness. If we continue to do bad over and over again, uh, things are just going to get worse for us and it, it's not going to be a good ending. Uh, but in the midst of us doing wrong, uh, God has given us another chance through the power of forgiveness. We're going to look at Psalm 51, which talks about King David. Psalm 51, the book of Psalms is in our Bible. It's a book of poetry. There's various different writers in Psalms. So Psalm 51 was written by David during a time when he did something very, very bad. And all he really wants from God is forgiveness. So let's look at Psalm 51. Psalm 51 verses 9 through 11. Turn your eyes from my sin and cover my guilt. Create pure thoughts in me and make me faithful again. Don't chase me away from you or take your Holy Spirit away from me. When we do bad things, uh, when we do wrong, we have the power of forgiveness. Many times uh, we feel bad or sad after doing something wrong. And that's God's spirit telling us that we messed up, telling us that we got it wrong. But the beauty of everything is that no matter how much we mess up or how often we mess up or we get off track, God still allows us to be forgiven. All we have to do is come to him honestly, to, to pray to him, talk to him, have a conversation, say, God, I messed up. God, I've done something wrong. God, I've done bad. Just like David did. All we have to do is tell God we messed up and ask him to forgive us. So if you did something wrong, I just encourage you. And we've all done something wrong. So I just encourage you to talk to God. Pray to him. Pray, say, Father, God, please forgive me. I, I messed up. God, I want to know you better. Just talk to him and ask for forgiveness and tell them that you are thankful that Jesus died for you, that Jesus died for our sins, that even though we mess up, that believing in Jesus allows us to be forgiven and that when this life is over, that we don't have to uh, face punishment forever, but we get to live in a place of blessings with God and with Jesus. Uh, one last verse as we close out this session on purpose, Romans 8 and 28. It's a very, very powerful verse. You've probably heard it in different translations or different versions of the Bible, but I'm going to read it um, in the contemporary English version because it's just a little bit easier for us to understand. So Romans 8 and 28. Romans 8 and 28. We know that God is always at work for the good of everyone who loves him. They are the ones God has chosen for his purpose beautiful thing even when we mess up and get punished when we have to go through bad things or go through uh difficult times god is allowing that to to do good god is allowing that to better us that's him working that clay that's him working on us so that we may become better people and better christians thank you so much for joining us in this lesson i'm going to pray us out 
And then we pray that you have a wonderful week. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we just honor and thank you, Father God, not because of what you do, but simply because you are our God. God, we love you and we thank you, God. We just ask that you help us to seek your face, God. As, as we do bad things in this world, God, let us know that we've done something wrong, God. Press it on our hearts so that we may change our ways and do better, Father God. We thank you for your son who died on the cross so that we may be forgiven. So God, I repent. I ask for forgiveness. I turn from all the bad things that I do and I seek your face. God, I ask for protection. Keep us in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and be blessed, everyone.